引きニートじゃないから大体今日だってお前がなりふり構わず勝手に突っ込んだせいでそうなったんだろう自業自得だ今度ダメ神ダメ神って言ったカズマが私のことなんだこれはい、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、Either that, or Rin really likes getting milked. Anyone knows aside though, Useless Goddess is a 5 star nuke archer who excels in sustained crit damage and wave clearing, making her ideal as a crit DPS and heavy duty farmer. And what do you mean her name's Ishtar? At level 90, Aqua has 13,965 HP and 12,252 attack, and those go up to 15,299 HP and 13,412 attack at level 100. She has standard Archer class star weight and star gen, MP charge gain of 0.45% on attack and 3% on defense, a 22.5% death rate, and she's lawful good, which explains why she's so stupid sometimes. She has a near automata deck with a Buster NP. Both her quick and a r t Her cards hit four times, her buster cards hit once, and her extra attack hits seven times. Immediately, what should hit you is that these stats, aside from her skills, gear her to be a crit archer, and while it's hard to see initially, two things give it away her very low MP charge gain and her card hit counts. Even with a four hit arts card, typically Rin can't generate charge well, and she needs the help of arts chains and MP generation buffs to do so, and because of that, if neither are available, crits are her third source of good MP charge gain. To help out a bit with this, she does have a 4 hit quick card, though she only has one of it, and a 7 hit extra attack. So, if you were to get a Brave Chain with her, she can produce a decent number of stars to support herself, but herself only. This is probably quite fitting given the rest of what her kit looks like, and seeing how goddesses in this game are usually like. Also, keep in mind that Rin is divine, as her fanboys would undoubtedly agree with. Because of this, if you're going up against her, make sure to use these servants on screen because they have super effective kits against her and can potentially delete her out of existence, or at least can truly exploit her greatest weakness. Gold Diggers,、uh, well, I guess in this case she's a gem digger, technically. First skill is Manifestation of Beauty B, which increases party attack and crit damage by 10 to 20% each for three turns on a 7 to 5 turn cooldown. Essentially, a charisma with a free crit damage buff attached to it. This is Rin's only support skill in her entire kit, and even then, it's meant to benefit herself more than anyone else because she's supposed to be a crit archer and because she's not really gonna be bringing any other support to the team unless you give her a 2030 to hold on to, which is roughly the equivalent of handing her a stone pickaxe and telling her to go mine diamonds for her own damn self. Her second skill is Gleaming Brilliant Crown A, which, other than sounding like a Dojin spin off of Amagi Brilliant Park, charges her own MP gauge by 30 to 50% and has 80% chances to grant herself Invul and Invul Pierce, which I calculated independently, both for one turn on an 8 to 6 turn cooldown. Y'all know what I think about 50% batteries already, so, other than telling you that this skill is the only thick part about Rin, I'll spare you my usual lectures since we need to briefly talk about this skill's side effects. This is Rin's only Only defensive skill, and unfortunately, it's got the Jalter or the Jack problem of being tied to another really good effect, which is the 50% charge in Rin's case. So, this means that in a normal fight, you'll have to go for the Invul effect when Rin is only like 10 or so percent off getting her MP, which wastes charge efficiency, especially when we know that she doesn't generate charge easily on her own. Or the opposite is true, which you're seeing in the gameplay of this video. Since it's free starting charge, you'll want to use the skill right away on turn one. But you might end up in a situation where you really would have liked that invul on a turn where someone's about to put Rin's anal chastity in danger. Worse than that, though, is the 80% RNG. Now, I've had discussions with people on stream who think that 80% is good enough and that it's not that big of a deal because it should go off most of the time. My advice for you is to not listen to the advice that those people give because clearly they're the type of people who never use servants with 80% RNG. So, unless you want to run Ozzy or someone else in the future who's got buff success buffs, be prepared to see Rin whiff things when you really need them, as you might expect from our one and only useless goddess not named Steno. 
Remember that if she ends up whiffing both the Invul and the Invul Pierce, she just hit a 4% chance of being the ultimate useless goddess, at which point you should probably punish her by setting a pile of gems on fire. And what better way to do that than to toss a multi at story? Her third skill is Mana Burst Gems A+, which puts a delayed buff on herself that gives her a 30-50% to attack buff for one turn the next turn after activation on a 5-3 to turn cooldown. A 50% attack buff for one turn every three turns, but the catch is that you have to wait a turn to use it. This is her version of Mana Burst, and it'd be borderline broken if it didn't have the delay on it. This means that in order to play Rin to her fullest potential, you actually can't just let her go full buster memes, tapping red buttons and hoping she'll just nuke everything to death. Instead, the one turn delay means that you have to be very mindful of your battle conditions if you're considering committing to using gems. You have to worry about whether or not you'll be able to get Rin's MP up the next turn, whether or not she'll be able to survive the next turn, and even how many face cards she'll likely be getting the next turn, which means you'd have to be counting face cards from whenever the hand started to make the best educated guess. This is the one instance where Rin fanboys can claim that they're big brains for choosing Rin as their waifu, and to be fair, if you master no pun intended, how to use gems in standard battle scenarios, you do deserve to be called Big Brain. But that's not most of you. Instead, most of you are like me, who doesn't pay attention to what's going on, and realize that you probably should have used gems a turn before, and kick yourself for forgetting all the damn time. Now imagine farming for hours with this kind of skill, huh? Her passive skills are Magic Resist A, which increases her own debuff resist by 20%, Independent Action A, which increases her own crit damage by 10%, and Goddess's Essence B, which increases her own damage by 225, and further increases her own debuff resist by another 22.5%. Normally we'd just snore right past passive skills, but Rin, being a Goddess Pseudo Servant, has Goddess's Essence, which is like a beefed up version of Magic Resist. What makes this really strong is that it stacks with the usual Magic Resist that most Knight class and Rider class servants get, so in total, Rin has a whopping 42.5% base debuff resist that's entirely passive. What this means for you is that every time an enemy tries casting a debuff by itself on your Rin with no other factors, it's almost a coin toss whether or not the debuff will land, and in the long run, this means that Rin will resist a ton of debuffs. Or, you know, at least she should, but we all know she'll find a way to be useless like always. Jacob's waifu's NP is Angal Takagashi, which I am again butchering the pronunciation of, but that's okay because you can't butcher the pronunciation of something whose language no one knows what it sounds like anymore. It's a Buster AoE MP that first increases her own Buster performance by 20 to 60% and deals 300 to 500% damage. A very simple and straightforward MP in true goddess fashion. No party buffs and no utility, just straight damage. The good thing about having a scaling damage steroid as your MP's overcharge is that you don't have to rely as much on skills for your damage, because every time you use your MP, you're basically getting a free damage boost essentially just for using your MP in the first place. This combined with the fact that at max skill levels, Rin only spends two turns in which she doesn't have any buffs active means that she can easily access her strongest damage outputs as long as she's able to consistently charge her MP to match this. From a numbers standpoint, by herself, she can give herself a 70% attack buff combined with at least a 20% buster buff, which means a total increase of 104% extra damage for her MP due to multiplicated buff stacking. She's the one, Cole! And for crits, she adds another 30% due to her charisma and independent action, and this gets even crazier at at least 165.2% extra damage if she gets a buster crit following her MP which actually turns out to be at least 330.4% extra damage because crits do double damage. This means that in total, taking all damage calculations into account, if you get a Buster Anchor crit, and what I mean by Anchor is the face card in the third position with her MP leadoff, that Buster crit's doing something like 1,670.76% of Ishtar's normal damage. And by the way, this is not in a Buster chain. For all you smart boys in the comment section, feel free to correct me on this if I'm wrong. To put that in perspective, that's more than the scaling that single target quick servants have at MP1 post interlude. The earlier path that and now you know why people were saying before Scotty came out why Quick was fucking useless. So her total damage equation in a Buster Brave Chain looks something like this. Keep in mind, once again, these are all her own buffs. Now start adding other people's buffs. 
In fact, I'll do that for you with everyone's favorite cock wizard as an example. With Merlin's hero creation and charisma, that buster anchor crit that I was talking about just a minute ago goes from 1670.76% to 4680% damage. <laughs> These buster memes are the reason why an MP1 Rin can still one turn wave 3 on this year's Christmas Lotto node if she can get a buster crit, but an MP5 Rin can't if she's only stuck with quick and arts crits. It sucks that she hasn't gotten an MP interlude yet, but given the potential for buff stacking and her buster nuke crits as we just demonstrated, maybe she doesn't really need it. Or maybe Rin fanboys will just interpret that as Rin not needing any buffs because she's just perfect the way she is. The OG thigh gap waifu has two distinct roles in FGO, a crit archer and a nuke farmer. As a crit archer, she's got a few things going for her. She's an archer, so that means she's got the second highest star weight in the game by class. The combination of her passive and her first skill is also a considerable 30% crit buff for 3 turns. And even if her first skill wears off, she'll still always have her 10% crit buff from independent action, which is a passive skill to fall back on. More importantly though, she pretty much locks herself in as a crit archer because there's nothing in her kit that provides any semblance of party support or utility except for her first skill itself, which I guess is a bit ironic. So this means that if you plan to bring her along, you pretty much don't have a choice but to make her your primary DPS. And if you want to make her your DPS, you might as well go all the way and build a crit team around her, unless you're trying to build some kind of scuffed crit team for someone else. Remember what I told you about telling Rin to go mine for diamonds. And even though her first skill is a party buff, like I said earlier, in essence it's really only meant for herself. It's more of a bonus that her teammates get the effects too, unless you really want to try running double crits or something. The absence of an MP damage buff in her kit is kind of like a blessing in disguise in this case, since this means that there isn't an effect that's being hogged by a potential MP damage buff, and so the majority of Rin's kit can directly contribute to beefing up her crit damage in some way. MP damage buffs are more useful for farming, so it's not as important if you're just gonna go the crit route. Speaking of farming, she can also be used as a nuke archer. Similar to how Mustard Boy is known for his single target nuking, Rin has a similar niche, albeit for AoEs, as a nuke archer. Because of all the buff stacking that she can do for herself, which doesn't include all the shit that she can get from teammates, Rin can easily push the limits of her MP damage in a way that others can't, and potentially one-shot some very high HP mobs, and her first skill being a charisma helps out the entire team for farming as well. Combine this with her 50% battery and SSR stats, and Rin should be one of your premier farming archers if you do have her. You'll just have to put up with a very long MP animation though. A few examples of her farming power include the shell node at Observatory and Babylonia. With max skills MP5 and max Annie Blonde, she can one-shot wave 3 where one of the crabs has about 185,000 HP. She's also the go-to farming archer for wave 2 in this year's Christmas Lotto node since she can nuke the roughly 150,000 HP Lamu, though you'll also need good MP levels on her for that too. What do you mean you didn't wail for Ishtar? Naturally then, to build a crit team around Orion, uh, wait, hold on, wrong goddess, you'll need to give Rin crit buffs, attack buffs, and star gen. If you're a whale or you got lucky off the pre-CCC banners and rolled two copies of 2030, you can rock double 2030, if not run Jackie Chan or anyone else who can produce stars. I also recommend that you run someone with a 2A 2B deck as your third, maybe a saber, since many sabers in FGO have 2A 2B decks and can take care of lancers that could pose a threat to Rin. Since I assume you're also taking Waver or Merlin as your support caster, this way she's got a flexible deck choice and can use Buster and Arch Chains wherever she needs. To. Be mindful though that Rin has the Billy problem of not having an effect on her own that increases her own star weight for more consistent and reliable crits. If you produce so many crit stars that this won't be an issue, all power to you, but for those of you who can't, be mindful of this in case you pop Rin's first skill too early. Possible Saber teammates include Burger Queens for their charismas, Thick Boy for his buffs and additional crit damage, Good Sieve for her MP damage, which is one of the buffs that Rin can't give herself, Dai Shori for Star Gen, though she's got a Lancer deck, so Arch Chaining will be harder, and Literal Waifu for both offensive and defensive buffs. Other teammates include Bandori Simulator, Summer Mountain Mama later on this year, Shaky, Eddie, 
Umu Caster, Take My Strong Hand, Murder Lolly, Knifey Bitch Number 2, ASMR Oni, and Hamtaro. Honorable mentions do go to Maho Shoujo Janu Magica later on in like a year or so, God's Plan, Bro Scander, Thick Dio, Luchadora, and Small Dio. In fact, even though I probably can't recommend this, try running Double Dio and Rin. It won't exactly be a Rin-focused crit team, since Ozzy's a rider and he'll constantly be stealing crit stars, if it's even a crit team at all, but his protection from Raw turns her Invul and Invul Pierce, Han's MP effects, and his own Imperial Privilege buffs into guaranteed buffs, which is something worth noting, though you do have to have perfect timing to line all that up. <laughs> Let's get the obvious ones out of the way. Elzio, Victor, Scope, and all the 50% starting charge CEs for instant MP. However, Holy Knight Dinner takes special mention here because inferior Rin Face is missing an MP damage buff like we mentioned before, which is again, the only damage type that she's missing from her kit. And HND has 15% on it when it's limit broken, which is a good boost to complete Rin's nuke package. Demonic Bodhisattva, and not devilish Bodhisattva, what the fuck are you thinking translation, is also a CE to consider if you don't have scope or other good starting charge CEs because it's already got 50% starting charge even without limit break and it gives you a free plus two overcharge. So if Rin uses it, she's getting a 40% buster buff on her MP. Though it's only for her first MP. Which shouldn't matter, because if you're only using it to farm, it should only take one MP anyway. The only downside to this is that Bodhisattva does have split stats and not full attack. Seal Designation Enforcer, and now that we've got Caldea Boys 2, Hot Sands are also great on Rin if you're looking to take advantage of her crits, since the one thing that she really needs as a crit archer is extra star weight to more reliably secure stars for her own face cards. Or you can just say fuck it and give her CEs that stack even more crit damage because you want to see yellow numbers fly off the side of your screen. Her bond CE is the Seven-Headed Warhammer Sita, Wait a minute, see the confirmed? Which gives the party 20% buster performance at the cost of 20% debuff resist when Rin's got this equipped and is on the field. Given the fact that she's meant to be used as your primary DPS if not in a farming team, this he is more or less a lost cause since you already have a 20% buster buff on Rin as her overcharge anyway. And while an additional 20% buster buff for the whole party is nice, her bond CE is still stuck down at 100 and 100 stats, and that 20% debuff resist loss can be a bit annoying for everyone, especially for Rin, since part of the reason why she's so convenient to use is that you just don't have to worry about debuffs landing on her as much compared to other servants. God damn it, Rin! Stop becoming even more useless. Rin Soccer is a crit archer who can easily double as a nuke archer for farming thanks to her damage-centric kit that focuses on helping Rin pump out as much damage as possible, which is a good analogy for what DW likes to do to their quote-unquote pseudo-servants. And like I mentioned at the beginning, hopefully she isn't into that kind of thing. But then again, you never know what kind of shit she's had to do to get her gems. And that's all you need to know about your very own copy of Useless Goddess Simulator. To report any bugs or crashes, please contact your nearest Sato Kazuma, your go-to Useless Goddess handler. Wait, what do you mean FGO isn't an isekai? Thanks for watching, y'all, and until next time, deuces.